Lesson 6.9, Word Problem Solving, Practice Fraction, Addition, and Subtraction. The strategy Work Backward can help us solve a problem with fractions that involve addition and subtraction. We can write an equation to help us represent the problem, then we can work backward to solve for the unknown using an inverse operation. Remember, inverse operation means opposite operation. Remember, before we can add or subtract fractions, the fractions must have a common denominator. We learned about that in video 6.4, which is linked in the description. And any time you see these red letters showing a video, that means it's linked in the description. We can multiply their denominators and use the product as the common denominator. If we have 1 half plus 1 third, we can just multiply the 2 times 3 denominators and use 6 as the common denominator we would get 3 6 plus 2 6 is equal to 5 6. And we can use the least common multiple of the denominators. We learned that the denominator 2 and 3 have a least common multiple of 6, so we can use that as the common denominator. And as we learned in video 6.7, remember we can rename mixed numbers to subtract. If we have 4 and 1 third, we could change it and rename it as a 3 plus a 3 thirds because the numerator and denominator are the same. It's equal to 1, so that would be 3 plus 1. That's our 4 for our whole number. And then we have our 1 third. We can add these two together to get 4 thirds. We have 3 and 4 thirds. We can also change the whole thing into a fraction greater than 1 by multiplying the whole number to the denominator. 4 times 3 is 12. We add the numerator, that makes 13, and we use the given denominator. We have 13 thirds. Sophia has two meters of fabric, and she will use half meter to make a tote bag, one fifth meter to make a dog bandana, and the rest of the fabric to make a sundress. How many meters of fabric will she have to make the sundress? So we think we can write an equation to solve this. We know she used a half meter for the tote bag and a fifth meter for the dog bandana. We don't know how much she used for the dress, so we're going to use M for meters for the dress. And she had two meters of fabric in all. So for our equation, we can use the variable M to take the place of an unknown amount. We have one half plus one fifth plus some number M is equal to two for the two meters. We work backward to find the value of m. And we can give them a common denominator and rename the whole number as a fraction greater than 1. 2 and 5 can meet at the multiple 10. So we have 1 half that becomes 5 tenths, 1 fifth that becomes 2 tenths, and our whole number 2, we can write it as 20 tenths because 10 tenths plus 10 tenths is equal to 2 whole. We add their numerators and get 20 tenths. Now we can subtract 20 tenths minus 5 tenths. That's 15 tenths. When we subtract the 2 tenths, we get 13 tenths. 13 tenths is equal to a 10 tenths plus a 3 tenths. That means it's equal to 1 and 3 tenths. So we know m is equal to 1 and 3 tenths meters. Sophia will have 1 and 3 tenths meters to make the sundress. And we know our answer is reasonable because 1 and 3 tenths is less than the 2 meters total fabric. And we can check our work with addition. We can add the half meter, the fifth meter, and the 1 and 3 tenths. That gives us 10 tenths. And we have our one whole. 10 tenths is one whole. That means we have two. So yes, it makes sense. We used subtraction as we worked backwards to find the value of m, and we used addition to check our work as an inverse operation. Mr. Lee sold 12 pounds of apples to three customers. If the second customer bought five and a half pounds, and the third customer bought four and three-fourths pounds, how many pounds of apples did the first customer buy? So we think we can write an equation that fits the problem then work backward from the total sold and subtract the given amounts to find the unknown amount. We can use the variable x to take the place of the pounds for the first customer. 
We know the second one was five and a half, and the third customer was four and three fourths, and it was a total of 12, so it equals 12. To work backward, we start with 12 and subtract the five and a half, then subtract the four and three fourths, and whatever is left over would be the value of x, the pounds for the first customer. We can estimate using benchmarks that 12 minus 5, because this is close to 5, that would be 7. And then if we subtract the 5 and a half, that would be about 1 and a half. So we know our answer should be about 1 and a half. We do 12 minus 4 and 3 fourths. We have no fraction here, so we can rename the 12 as an 11 and a 4 fourths with the same numerator and denominator to equal a 1. That would be 11 and 1. That makes the 12. Now we can subtract 3 fourths from the 4 fourths. We get 1 fourth. And 11 minus 4 is 7. Now we're at 7 and 1 fourth. We need to subtract the 5 and a half. We have 7 and 1 fourth. We need to give them a common denominator. We can multiply this denominator times 2 and the numerator times 2 to make it 5 and 2 fourths. But we can't subtract because this one numerator is not great enough to subtract a 2 numerator. We can rename this 7 and 1 fourths as a 6 plus a 4 fourths plus a 1 fourth. Here's our 7 and here's our 1 fourth. Now we put these together and 4 fourths plus 1 fourth is 5 fourths. We write it as 6 and 5 fourths. Now we can subtract 5 and 2 fourths. Numerator 5 minus numerator 2 is a numerator 3. We use that denominator. We have 3 fourths. 6 minus 5 is 1. We get 1 and 3 fourths pounds sold to the first customer. And it's a reasonable answer because it's close to our estimate. 1 and a half is close to 1 and 3 fourths. So if this is confusing you, what I did here, we learned this in video 6.7, and maybe you can watch that quickly. Aside from working backward, we can also add the given amounts, then subtract the sum from 12. We had some number x plus 5 and a half plus 4 and 3 fourths was equal to 12. We can add the 5 and a half and 4 and 3 fourths. We give them a common denominator. They can meet at the multiple 4. So this one is not going to change. It's going to stay the same. But 5 and a half will become 5 and 2 fourths. We add them together and get 9 and 5 fourths. 9 and 5 fourths is equal to 9 plus a 4 fourths plus a 1 fourth, which means it's equal to 10 and 1 fourth. Now we have x plus 10 and 1 fourth is equal to 12. We can do 12 minus the 10 and 1 fourth, and that'll be equal to the number x. We turn 12 into an 11 and 4 fourths. Then we can subtract the 10 and 1 fourth, and we get the 1 and 3 fourths. So that's 1 and 3 fourths pounds sold to the first customer. That equals x. So there can be more than one way to solve a problem, and usually one way is easier than another, or you might prefer one way over the other. But if your teacher is trying to teach you working backward, then you need to use the method we used before where we started with our total amount and subtracted, got a subtotal, then subtracted again. Bob has four and three-tenths gallons of paint. He used one and three-fourths gallon to paint his bedroom and two gallons to paint his living room. How many gallons are left? We write an equation that fits the problem using a variable to represent the unknown amount. The total gallons were four and three-tenths, he used one and three-fourths to paint the bedroom and two gallons to paint the living room. And we can use G for gallons for the unknown amount of gallons that are remaining. To work backwards, we use G for gallons is equal to the total amount four and three-tenths minus the one and three-fourths he used for the bedroom minus the two gallons he used for the living room. We start with four and three-tenths minus one and three-fourths. We give them a common denominator, and four and ten can meet at the common multiple, 20. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount. So four times five is 20, so three times five is 15. 10 times two is 20, so three times two is six. And we have four and six-twentieths 
minus 1 and 15 twentieths. And because this 6 numerator isn't great enough to subtract that 15 numerator, we need to rename this 4 as a 3 and a 20 twentieths. And then here we have our fraction 6 twentieths. Now we group these together as 26 twentieths, and we can subtract the 15 from the 26 and get an 11. We get 3 minus 1 is 2. We have 2 and 11 twentieths. So now we did this part. We need to subtract the two gallons for the living room. We get 11 twentieths. So we know that g, the gallons remaining, is equal to 11 twentieths. Now here's a word problem using whole numbers to help you completely understand what we're doing. Mrs. Kim made 72 cupcakes. Some of the cupcakes were chocolate, 24 were vanilla, and 12 were lemon. How many cupcakes were chocolate? We take the total amount, 72. We can use C for chocolate for the unknown amount. There were 24 vanilla and 12 lemon. We write an equation to represent the problem using a variable for the unknown amount. So we're going to let C equal the number of chocolate cupcakes. We write it by working backward as C is equal to the total amount 72 minus the 24 vanilla ones and minus the 12 lemon ones. 72 minus 24 is 48. Now we take the 48 and subtract the 12. We get a 36. We know C is equal to 36. She made 36 chocolate cupcakes. You must be very, very careful as you're renaming mixed numbers to subtract or add. You want to make sure you're doing it correctly. We took the whole number and broke it into one less, and that one less was written as the same numerator and denominator, and it was grouped together with the fraction part of the mixed number. We got 3 and 4 thirds. And we can write the entire thing as a fraction greater than 1 by multiplying the whole number to the denominator, then adding the numerator, we get 13 thirds. This is very useful when you're subtracting and the numerator in the minuend is not great enough to subtract the numerator in the subtrahen. In our next lesson, 6.10, we're going to use properties of addition with fractions. I hope you're safe and well, and I hope I see you next time. Hit that like button. Bye.